are Rockies podcast brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. We're right now a $5 bet on any NBA playoff team to win. Well, when they do win, you get $150 in free bets. All you got to do is use promo code DNVR. First time you sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook. It's that easy. Here we are on the DNVR Rockies post-game show. I'm Patrick Lyons. I am Susie Hunter. And joining us today, I'm Brendan Vogt. Nice to meet you guys. A very special episode. One of our good buddies, yes. crossover. Nice to meet you, chat. Susie, nice to work with you officially. Patrick, yes. we haven't worked together either, man, so this is fun. No. That's weirder to me that it you is. guys yeah. haven't worked I mean, together yet. and all that, but sure. Because I haven't worked with anyone. Not officially. Well, Brandon, you and I, we go way back, way right? Way back. Way back. Way back. But we're Jersey. We're both Susie had that look like, wait, did you just call him Brandon? I mean, that's kind of the bit. It's I mean, bit. He gets yeah. it. He I knows. do get it. I do. But we're Jersey we, boys, both of us, so we got that connection. That's right. Oh, That's what an right. East Coast heavy show right now. Well, you know what? Rockies handed it to an East Coast team there in DC, yes, the Nationals. They, did. they take two of three, games two and game three. We'll break all of that down. We'll preview the Arizona Diamondbacks series with our buddy Derek Montillo down at PHNX Diamondbacks. Have a little bit of fun today. But hey, tip of the cap right off the bat to our DraftKings Sportsbook. King of the game, that would be Mr. Brendan Rodgers. He goes two for four with a double, RBI double, and a three-run home run. Rocket. His first of the season. You like you like the distance? You like the extension on that one, Brendan? Oh, looked good, sounded good, felt good, I assume, I for him. Uh, yeah, what a shot. And a feel-good moment. Feel-good moment of the game as well, I would argue. Yeah, we can confirm he did feel so much better after hitting that first home run this I'm sure season. he did. Yeah, I'm sure he did. a big relief for him. That was what got him off the schneid last year because, you know, he came up in 2019. 2020 was a lost year for him, was injured. And you even had a guy like Alan Trejo hit his first home run. I think maybe even Jonathan Daza. Mm. Might have had a homer before him, either that or, or soon thereafter. And once he hit the first home run, uh, the shoulders went down. He could relax. He was able to relax the other night uh, on Sunday there, the two-hit ball game. He had two hits as well on Tuesday night. It was his 39th multi-hit career mm-hmm. uh, game of uh, of his early career and gets number 40 here with the two-hit performance and looks good defensively too, I think. It's been yeah. really solid. The one thing he mostly didn't lose in his slump was – his defensive abilities. Yeah, he, he uh, he's, he's was really keeping solid. It up. Keeping it up. I, I love what he was able to do in that uh, offensively, there were a lot of guys that were able to chip in. Garrett Hampson, the little guy. Brendan, come on. Sneaky pop is what we call it. Yeah, tiny king is what I like to call <laughs> uh, men cut from that cloth. TK another Hampson? F- another feel-good moment, by the way, as well. Welcome back. Nice way to get right back into the swing of things. Uh, and that was a big one, too. Momentum changer. That was that. Uh, that gave them the lead, and so you say, is, you know, that possibly could be the turning point of the game. But the score is still incredibly close at that point. It wouldn't be until Rogers three run home run. Yep. I mean, that that ultimately was that turning point uh, of the game. It came when the score was five to three there. So that was uh, incredible, incredibly pivotal. We we talked to Hampson after the game, and I said, not too many guys can hit a home run, and then in their next at bat try for somewhat of a, of a drag bunt single. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a rare feat. That's some Ricky Henderson type stuff right there. Uh, I like that, obviously, on the, on the wrong side of the plate there from the right side. Uh, similar to Ricky, but nevertheless, uh, was able to do both those things really well. Looked solid at shortstop. He yeah. hasn't played a lot of shortstop. Played a lot of shortstop in the last couple of years because of a guy named Trevor... What was it? I don't mm. remember. Fable. Trevor Fable. <laughs> Could be. I think yeah. that was it. Trevor Myth. Yeah. yeah. He's not doing he, too well in Boston right now. Uh, but on our side, flashing the leather, Hampson. I mean, that last play to put the game away, I thought he looked really good at short. And he's primarily an outfielder, right, I think, throughout his career? Or is that? Well, more recently, more, yeah, yeah you, you would know him as that. Um, you know, did come up, was drafted as a shortstop, uh, converted over to second base just a little bit. But you can, as you said, you see that range at shortstop. But, you know, when you're a utility player nowadays – at one point, it was you play all the outfield positions or you play all the right. infield positions. And now you've got to be able to do both. And so the Rockies have had a, uh, doing a good job with their organizational philosophy. The Dodgers have, you know, did it a few years before. Rockies catching up. Hampson has been one of those guys where he can play middle infield and go to the outfield. He even took some ground balls over at first base when mm-hmm. uh, he had the hand injury when he was on the IL. So you never know where you're going to need that kind of flexibility. Hampson, he's everywhere. He's not the third string catcher, though. He's not. <laughs> Connor Joe 
is the third string catcher, meaning, God forbid something happens to the first two guys, Connor Joe's in there, does have a catching background. So What can't Connor Joe do? I'm a big Connor Joe fan. I want that We're to be We're all on the Connor Joe fans, yeah. yeah. And I'm Hard glad that he be. got attention on the YouTube broadcast today. Kojo? Kojo. He oh, did? Yeah. Oh, there was an interview. Um, Amy G interviewed him, did a whole thing. It was a, a delightful interview, but it uh, went into his you know, backstory, um, how cancer really changed his viewpoint on baseball. It was a great interview. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a national story. We know that now. Mm -hmm. It's really starting to blow up in, in a really major way. We do have this super chat from Jess coming in right at the right time as we are talking about the offense. Rockies do put across nine runs here in this game last night in the 5-2 game you know they looked really solid but they did leave a lot of runners in scoring position didn't do well the question is will the Rockies sign or trade for another bat well right now the only guy that's ultimately a free agent is Michael Conforto and he's a little bit banged up it's going to cost you a draft pick so the trade deadline has been the key we've really been saying it all season long that the Rockies just have to be good enough until about late June maybe early July because general manager Bill Schmidt has been aggressive we've See him go out and trade a prospect in Adrian Pinto. Not a big name guy, but the Rockies love their players and they don't necessarily like giving them up. Mm -hmm. Bill Schmidt's trying to change that. So that's where, Jess, you could see the Rockies go out and say, you know what? We need to make a, a straight up addition right now for where there's a hole. But I don't, I don't see a hole necessarily on their team. Where is there a hole? Where would you like to upgrade right now? That might be the, the best question to piggyback off of Jess's Super Chat. Thank you for that. Where yeah, thank you. Where would you improve? I mean, backup catcher? Dom Nunez did have a hit today. That yeah. was nice to see. Also had the defensive play of the game and vote called that one out. We'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. But what we're, you know, are we being greedy to, to want to upgrade on a team that's 15 and 10 right now through the first 25 games of the season? After, you, Susan. Oh, after me oh wow Please. um i know it's like well it's like everyone's doing just fine true you it's know true. it's like there isn't one specific person where i'm like oh look at this dead weight like we don't have any dead weight like everyone's kind of doing what they need to do and when they're off like they're all kind of off together and when they're on they're all kind of on together true yeah, I mean, you'd say, hey, maybe some kind of big impact bat in the middle of the lineup. Well, they do have one. I was going to say. Mm -hmm. But but what? But what, Brendan? Well, he's he's hurt. I mean, he's but hurt. Chris Bryant, could he absolutely have that impact, just that big bat? You know, a guy to, to take advantage of those situations with runners in scoring position. That was the idea, right, when signing him. So, of course, obviously, back issue is always concerning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we just hope we don't hear the dreaded backyotomy. We hope that's not the case. <laughs> you I'll like tell you, that. obviously, I cover the Nuggets full time. I've talked enough about bad backs. I'm done with it. I don't You're need done. to. Yeah, I, I would Man. like not to think about it or put energy into that direction. Yeah, so you, you keep that energy away from yeah. our Rockies, okay? What's funny is it's not it's not technically a body part. It's a body area. Okay, right? fair enough. Is it is it not even a part? So it's I just kind of funny we think of that. It's just a gen. It's like a uh, lower, lower body discomfort. Your back that's is like so vague. It's most. Your back is most of your body. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, like it's, it's not a true. body part. It's like a chunk. It's most of you. And no one has front issues. <laughs> just back issues. But he is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that does appear to really be bothering him, right? Not yet picking up a bat and swinging. Is that correct? That was the latest. Yeah, as of, as of uh, yesterday, as of Wednesday, still hadn't swung a bat. Mm -hmm. uh, did you know is is throwing a little bit? So. While he's eligible to come off on the IL here uh, on Friday, uh, the first game in Arizona, don't know if that'll happen uh, just yet exactly. So we'll kind of wait and see. So Jess, you know, that's that's the guy that you could have. But yeah, you know, that's a good point, Susie, is that everyone's doing what they need to do. So other than CJ Crone had another RBI today. He now has 23 on the season, tied for the most in the National League with Joshua Fuentes' cousin. Brendan, are you you big fan of Joshua? Actually, you'd be a very big fan. We may have to get to that on another episode, uh, your favorite cousins. I, I would think that might be your favorite if, cousin. I don't know if people want to hear about it from me. No, they, now maybe I not. Now I do. No, no. Like, another episode, another are episode. We, it's my, it's we're my on first the same appearance. Page. Yeah, Just don't yeah. worry, we're on the same page. It's my page. first appearance. <laughs> Cousin-wise... We're on the same page. <laughs> we will save that for DNVR <laughs> underscore genealogy. Okay. The other beat that I'm starting. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to we'll remove, have Tyler Kinley on the show, too. We'll have to remove a lot of vowels when it comes to that. But Crone's been the guy <laughs> who's been fantastic. And you go, hey, Rogers, you like to see more out of him? Well, okay, we're, we're starting to see that now. But he even said in the post game, hey, when he gets going, he gets going. His last seven games, I think it's up to 250 now, that batting average, which looked not great, but... It's been so low, trending in the right direction. And, you know, the exclamation points today, some great at-bats. 
uh, both of those at-bats actually where he picked up RBIs. So that's got to be – obviously helps them get the win today, but it's also one of those feel-good moments in that it's encouraging looking forward ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, lo- I love that. Um, you know, Grichik's been really solid. So, I mean, I don't necessarily know where you'd want to upgrade. It it basically could come down to the point of somebody getting injured. And there, there's a depth issue, uh, obviously, in the upper levels of the organization. Not sure we mentioned on the podcast, but Colton Welker, third base, first base, DH type, uh, has somewhat of a shoulder issue. Could keep him out for a decent amount of time. So you're, you're running a little thin there. Kind of wait and see. Uh, maybe don't be too aggressive. Also, no one's trading right now. Not even the Cincinnati Reds. Not even <laughs> them. They're not. They're they're done trading for now. They will eventually. But you know, we did see two players. Well, we saw one player today that most likely will be on the trade block. Josh Bell, big dude, switch hitter, got power from both sides of the plate. He had a nice series along with Juan Soto. How did he score too, man? <laughs> he was chugging along. He's a bit lumbering. He's a bit. <laughs> Lumbering. That was the longest developing <laughs> run I've ever seen. Yeah, Susie, you you kind of called. I think before the series, we were talking about players, home runs. Mm-hmm. The odds for CJ Crone to homer on Tuesday night were better than Juan Soto's. Both those guys homer, but mm-hmm. Soto ends up hitting the second shot, whereas Crone only had the one. Yeah, I think I, I actually went back and listened to the tape from the podcast um, a couple of days ago, and I was like, yeah, Juan Soto will hit a couple of home runs. And Precisely that. Correct. Precisely so that. correct. Man, that first, I, I wasn't even that bad of a pitch. I thought maybe they just went inside one too many times, but he is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a fun guy to watch. My NL MVP. That's it. Fun guy, but sometimes can be a little bit over aggressive. Has some flair, Brendan. You called this out on Twitter at Brendan Vote. Good That's baseball right. takes these days out of you. I, no, not as many basketball things on your timeline. It's strange how that works out. Nevertheless. I think I confused some people today. Lost some followers. Someone asked me if I got <laughs> hacked. But uh, oh I will be gosh. tweeting about baseball now sometimes. You're a baseball guy Just now. Just going to throw that you out You are there. a baseball guy, but, but yeah, Soto that, a little too aggressive on third base, and, and you like that as defensive play, and I, I couldn't agree more with you. I mean, just a big-time play. For a game where the Rockies got out to several different healthy leads, the result certainly felt precarious the whole time. And There's a, a lot of swing innings or at-bats or what have you you can look to. This could easily have been a game the Nationals run away with, I thought. But there were some there were some big moments where the Rockies were able to keep it together. Big mistake from Soto, heads up play from Colorado, Nunez, and perhaps one that they had talked about prior to that game, something that the YouTube broadcast talked about this late into a series. Is it something they noticed? Maybe they had noticed Soto had fallen asleep on the base pass, and it's something they had talked about, maybe premeditated. But they were set up for a huge inning. And to stem that, and, re- and I just thought that was... This whole game could look differently without that pickoff and the subsequent double play, which was huge. Yeah. Yeah, also a turning point there, as you point out. Top of the fifth inning. Rockies go into that 4-2 lead, but uh, single by Hernandez, walk by Soto, double by Bell. So they hold up Soto there on third base. You know, good call. There's no outs there. And you got runners on second and third. Now, Yadiel Hernandez would get a single in that, that bat, but not before, as you said, Soto's dancing down the line just a little bit. Great heads up play. We saw that, I think, earlier in this homestand from Elias Diaz on a, on a back pick over on first base. One of the Reds guys mm. might have been Tommy Pham, not sure exactly. But that was fantastic. And yeah, uh, talked with Dom after the game. And he, and he said, We. And he, he pointed to his locker mate, Elias Diaz, saying, mm. like, Yeah, no, we, we saw that coming. And those guys communicate. They knew what was going on ahead of time. And, and I felt really happy for Dom because, you know, the bat hasn't necessarily been there for him yet this year. That's okay. He only needs to really do it on the defensive side. That's fine. Anything you get out of that bat is bonus. Right. But he was even able to acknowledge that was a big play. And it's like, yeah, he had to have heard that a billion times before he could say it himself. And I'm glad he was able to say that because you're right. I think that was very much the turning point and easily the defensive play of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see about Darcy Kemper tonight defensively here at the, uh, the corner of Colfax in York at the DNVR bar. A little, little off-camera shout-outs there. <laughs> Got the big watch party going down tonight. For the Colorado Avalanche, uh, it's going to be popping off. It's going to be awesome, and uh, we have watch parties just about every day. That's it's true. actually the most lit thing ever, but if you're not a member already, you are missing out. You get price breaks on our tailgates, like for the Broncos and for the Nuggets party buses that we do. Those are always fun, and an annual membership comes with a free T-shirt from the DNVRLocker.com. 
You get an extra, or you get a member-sized beer. It's enormous. Member-sized, yeah. It's fantastic. Uh, you get an extra raffle ticket at our watch parties to win free gear. And who doesn't love free gear? That's it. It's awesome. Um, and you get access to our members-only Discord, which we are in all the time, and we can confirm. It is a fantastic conversation where you don't have to deal with politics, you don't have to deal with jerks. Nope. It's just like a fun chat with everyone in the community. It is. Yeah, we, we love it uh, just about as much as the Escape Artist Relief and Recovery Creams. Man, it really helps with deep muscle tissue discomfort. I'm kind of training for low key for a little half marathon. We'll oh. see Are if you? that gets off the ground. I, I No is it, promises. Is it low key if you talk about it on your internet show? Uh <laughs> no, well, I mean, I, I I haven't officially signed up for. I'm waiting for the last minute. Okay, like, right. it allows me to pull the cord, so it ha it's not official yet. I'm not registered, so in that case, it's low key. Because I'm taking it easy. I'm not doing a marathon this spring. I'm only, only doing, doing a half marathon. A half, Susan. yes. Only because I'm modest. Well, Susie and I will be doing quarter marathons later in the year. So yeah, not a yeah. thing, but I like it. Oh, is it not? I love it should it. be. Why not? Not I'm a doing thing, an eighth of a marathon. It. <laughs> Just a, a little eighth. I'm I'm running a mile. You can yeah. do a relay. Walking half of you it. You do a relay. Yeah. No, I'm good. But there's oh no batons. Gosh, let's do a relay. There's no batons. You don't <laughs> no. have to worry about that. That's fantastic. Although around here we could do something with like a little bobblehead. You got to pass and then run it with it for three miles and then want to smash. Here, are you open. writing this down? Are you, These are this is great. This is content. gold, Jerry. Gold. No, but seriously. No, <laughs> Escape. <laughs> You know what? If I don't sign up, that's just for me not preparing. But it's not because my body's letting me down. Because I tell you what, again, that deep muscle tissue discomfort has not been an issue for me because of Escape Artists. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting restocked. I'm getting reloaded at any of Light Shades locations. There's 11 in the area. I've got my favorite. I'm sure you do too. They got a premium selection of cannabis concentrates, top shelf flowers, edibles, tinctures, accessories, and more. And now all y'all out there can get 25% off all non-sale items when you use code DNVR. Shop online at lightshade.com for pickup or visit any Lightshade location near you. I love it. All right. So you, no issues there. No, not you know, at all. Where there are also no issues with watching Nuggets or Avalanche. Well, Finally. Nuggets. Um, that is all fixed with Avaca TV. Yes. You can watch Nuggets and Avs on Avaca TV, not to mention Rockies and Altitude Sports. All you have to do is go to Ivaca.tv slash DNVR. There are zero hidden fees or contracts. It's just $25 a month plus a receiver, and your price is locked in for two whole years. Never worry with Avaca TV and enjoy the Nuggets and Avalanche once again. Fantastic. Ivaca.tv slash DNVR. And yeah, when you use code DNVR, you're also going to get $10 off those first three months on top of all of that great deal. Bottom line, you get to watch all your sports in Denver in one spot. So Rockies go to 15 and 10 with their victory. They have a negative run differential just in the series. But again, just scoring more runs on a game by game basis is way more important than over <laughs> Winning three the games, games I span. Think. Yeah, that's an important stat. That is an important. At stat. least it was when I last plugged myself into baseball. I don't know if winning is still. You know, a lot of things change. Still prioritized. A lot okay. of things yes. change in All baseball. Right. I'm not sure if you've heard. Launch angle is a big deal, and they're trying to indoctrinate the the future generations of baseball fans. We we got a first look at that indoctrination process Ooh. going down live on the field, literally at Coors Field today. Yeah, so it was, um, maybe you saw some of our tweets, but it was STEM day at the park. So there were literally 11,000 kids wow. in the That's stands at like 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah. They were getting all kinds <laughs> of science lessons and there were all these experiments. They were dropping things from drones. A robotic dinger was throwing pitches that like some mm -hmm. kids built. But then Vinny Castillo, fuel, well, but it, was, <laughs> it was terrifying. Yeah, it sounds it. But, <laughs> but Vinny Castillo was um, demonstrating launch and Angle. That and was actually cool. He was doing a little physics lesson huh. with baseball, and the kids were eating it up. They were screaming their heads off. It was awesome. Cool. Yeah, the, you could hear the teachers going, he was one of the Blake Street Bombers kids because he was doing it with no – there was no turtle shell. It was just Mike Redman on his birthday, mind you, oh. throwing BP. And th they were trying to get the graphics going. They couldn't get it going to the scoreboard. It's not the first time there's been scoreboard issues or scoreboard business in general. There's at a lot Coors of Field scoreboard drama lately. A lot of scoreboard drama in general. That's Susie's beat. That's <laughs> Susie's <laughs> beat. DMVR it was. Scoreboards. There were. There were. Uh, I wasn't watching, but I kind of saw it up on the TV. There were. There were parachuters 
Yes. Weren't there? There were Air Jumping Force parachuters. There were like five of them that came down. It was That's pretty cool. It was really cool. But the Rockies teased that earlier in the day because they tweeted a GoPro video. I think they must have practiced it beforehand because there was a GoPro video of someone parachuting into Coors Field, but before people got there. Uh, but it was awesome. The kids were loving it. Seems like it was an awesome day at the park from start to finish. Before the game started, during uh -huh. the game, vibes are good, weather was good. It was a little hard to walk into the park with 11,000 kids yeah, in your way, but like other than that. And the buses. And the buses. Yeah. Also the buses. There are also a couple of weird people just standing around too that I gave a little side eye to. I didn't know what was going on. I'm th I just chalked up to a bunch of single dads maybe that didn't <laughs> didn't get a chance to see their kids and this is where they met up. It was very weird. Uh, I, th 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 <laughs> this is going off the rails again. It like, is. I, I didn't intend to. Some things need to thoughts need to stay inside my my head. <laughs> Brenda, did you watch the game from the comfort of your uh, your device there on YouTube? I did. I watched the YouTube broadcast. I watched it here at the bar on my laptop. Then my laptop died, so I watched it on my phone. There's your full breakdown, Patrick. Okay. Wow. It, uh, but what did it look like? Sloppy start for the YouTube broadcast team. I'm not gonna I lie. I did not there hear good things. We did not hear good things. Technical issues, but I didn't mind. I didn't mind. Just happy to be watching baseball. They were. Yeah. Uh, there was a weird cutaway to Ball Arena at one point. The I saw that what? on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. I, the color temperature changed several times. I was confused, but is that the lingo? Color temperature? No idea. Making sure. I like that. Just guessing. No. Uh -huh. I went to that college. Is, that is lingo, but I didn't see a color temperature change. It looked very dark and faded, like you know when you roll over on a video and it like becomes like well, darkened. Well, like changed a couple times. It, it was yeah, weird. it was. It's it was from. I had it like open in a tab, but obviously I wasn't watching it because I was like physically at the game. Yeah. Uh, I could watch the thing in the colors they're supposed to be in i like that it, that there were a couple spots where i looked over and go well that's strange that they're showing that on the broadcast and then realizing oh it's not at&t sportsnet so they can put a graphic up of chris bryant and all his injuries right like like, diagram. Ah, oh okay all right right we got youtube going on they, they did there were some cool things though i mean yeah you know that broadcast at its best the stat cast features and all that they were showing the differences between the distance some of those home runs carried and projected distances at sea level and uh, cores were certainly acting up today there, mm -hmm. there were some that felt to me like i did not think he got all of that but plenty of action ball was flying did you do you like that i mean i imagine to a degree you like the advanced analytics and all that how about during a broadcast though is that i guess if done right how did how did the youtube broadcast do as far as maybe trying to educate and I inform you i thought it was good they yeah. did they didn't shove it down our throats, but I mean, some of these things are, are good information, right? And there is a lot of dead time in baseball on the air where there's time to fill. And if it can be done educating, you know, in, in ways that are fun and informative and contextual, mm -hmm. uh, not just nerdy sort of just nerding out together, you know, for hours at a time. <laughs> but I thought it was a good balance. Um, and I thought that that feature was pretty cool today. To the point I was making earlier, the Randall Gritchick home run which I saw you tweet went 389 feet. Yeah. I swear to God, he popped out. I don't, <laughs> they showed the replay on that. He could not have gotten further underneath that ball, but that was, was a home run that, that went out. You saw a lot in 2018 mm. where there were balls where you go off the bat, you go, all right, that's an F nine yeah. fly out to the right fielder. And yeah, that ball kind of carried. And, and that hasn't been the case this season at all. Right. In a lot of ways, I'd be curious to know how many teams have had three home run games uh, so far this season. That was actually the Rockies' first three home run game uh, this season. Their first since, I think, September 17th mm. of last year, which coincidentally also came against the Washington Nationals. Mm. Uh, interesting note from the Rockies' PR team was that this was the first time they've had two three-run home runs in a game since 2019 Oh wow! in Pittsburgh. Tony Walters and Daniel Murphy. So just kind of a weird, strange little wow. fun fact. If you will, so Hampson and B-Rod getting the job done with the uh, Ducks in scoring position, as it were. The base is a little bit juiced there. Uh, so that was fantastic. But yeah, ball's not typically flying very well. Uh, ball's rolling on the ground really nicely for the Rockies, turning a ton of double plays. And that's that's been the secret to the starting yeah. rotation success really for about four or five years. What's our double play count for this season? Uh, I think they had maybe, I don't know how many they had today. Two? Two. They were okay. leading the majors, right, coming in? Two, so I think maybe 36. Mm -hmm. 36 or 38. Both of those were big, too. And they yeah. almost had three, Brendan Rodgers in the ninth, but he was a tough throw. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was uh, that was a good, just 
good defense overall. I mean, that's been their strength. That's been their calling card. Since 2018, they've got the most double plays in all of baseball. Second is the Kansas City Royals. I said this on one of those quick little post-game recaps, which we always will drop if we happen to do a show in the afternoon. So 5 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday, you can guarantee to listen to a brand new episode of the DNVR Rockies podcast wherever you're at. And I mentioned Coors Field and Kauffman Stadium, the two largest outfields in all of baseball, mm-hmm. yet both those teams have turned the most double plays. Why? No idea. It's a conspiracy. You, you have to be that good, I guess, on the margins when, when all that's going on. Uh, Rockies go to 12-3 and three in the purple jersey. So that's been the magic jersey so far. 12-3 and three when they wear that one. There's a lot of talk about the jersey on the broadcast, actually. Really? really? And in the chat. It was, a, it was a great debate. Is it a top three jersey in baseball? The purple Rockies jersey. Interesting. So uh, we I've noticed a couple times, because Rockies have played a lot of red teams. Mm-hmm. First, it was the Phillies. It's day games. Day games is when it pops. When they played the mm. Phillies on that Wednesday getaway day, the purple and the red together, chefs kiss. It was amazing. And the same thing with the Reds on Sunday. They're just in the sunlight. It looks amazing. I'm not saying red and purple kind of go together. Maybe they do. I don't know. Roses, flowers, but just on the field, fan friggin' tastic. They're both like jewel tones, you know. They coordinate with one another. Sure. Jewel tones. I didn't, I didn't know that was a term yeah. until just now. Learn something new every day. We're learning about color temperatures. We're learning about jewel tones. Mm-hmm. We're learning that the white jersey... 0-4. Oh, 0-4 ah. in the white jersey. Maybe even more shocking. This is where we zoom in on Brendan. Let's see his reaction. They've yet to wear the black vest this whole season. Huh. Yeah. That is shocking. Is that wild? That's weird, right? That is weird. What's the holdup, Patrick? Why not? I, I, I Superstition. They they went away with it for whatever reason. Now, John Gray liked to wear the ve- uh, vest a lot. Mix would you know He'd mix it up, I think, following a loss. But he was a vest guy. Marquez was a vest guy. Chad Bettis, the best guy. He hasn't been on the roster in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what they're waiting for exactly. I love the vests. The vests are my favorite. Good looks. I love vests vest look good. day. I am partial to the purple, though. I Even well before I got connected to Denver and DNVR, just watching games as a kid, mm-hmm. the purple cores look and the trees in center field and the whole thing, it just felt like such a distinct vibe that I always really appreciated. I always really enjoyed watching those road series in Colorado. Uh, the purple's a vibe, and people loved it in the YouTube chat. Very popular nationally, apparently. That's special yeah. to us, so, yeah. you yeah. know? That's it, Purple Mount Majesty, we know that. Purple jerseys, green backdrop, purple, green, City Connect, we we're gonna be talking about that. Talk about Did it. you see the leaked socks yet? No. Oh. Leaked socks. Also, leaked put that socks. on our vocabulary. <laughs> okay. Images. That's future bad name. The images socks. have been leaked. They're not leaky socks. It's a yeah. <laughs> I, well, I get what you meant. <laughs> you got it. Terrible yeah. Terrible. But the City Connect jersey, and we'll have to again get your take on that at some point this season. You're gonna be joining okay. us a lot. Very excited for that, Brendan. Me too, man. Um, Me too. But but we we've got uh, some rumors of there being a little bit of green oh. in the City Connect jersey. Mm. We'll see what happens with that. Did you notice anything? I I don't know if the broadcast talked about it, but Aaron Sanchez of the Nationals, we thought maybe in the first inning there was something going on between Sanchez, the Rockies, Daza, Crone. Daza ends up getting hit by a pitch. It was a. You, I saw you tweet that he had kind of funky body language. Uh-huh. I agreed. I don't think he loved the strike zone in that first inning, and I think that may have been a part of what set him off a little bit. Right away went over to have a conversation about that strike zone, that outside corner. Because there were some inconsistent calls from the jump, and I think he was trying to figure that out. And it did seem like he got a little testy early. But Rockies put together some good at-bats in the first inning. I know they didn't have anything to show for it, but they went deep into the count. They made him work, throw about 20, 21 pitches, and easy to attach these things in hindsight, but maybe that that bled into some of the mistakes he made in the second inning. No, for sure. That that turned out that's what it was. Uh, thought there was good something eye. going on, but it was really the pitcher – Got to giving the giving the eyes to I the think that's umpire. What it was. I think that's what it was. Uh, yeah. I talked with some of the Nationals media, and they're like, "Yeah, I called him up. This is only like his third start. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Mm. He's 29. It was a really good prospect with Toronto, and he's had some injuries. I think he missed all of 2020, and so he's trying to get his career back on track. And so I think he's a little bit disgruntled. He's different, as I heard, quote unquote, different. So uh, I'm glad that there was there's no animosity really between the two sides, and it was really just Sanchez and and his baggage, and we know. Some people can have baggage. Yeah, some pitchers in the can baseball be world. Bit of a head case, right? Yeah, Rockies take their sixth series, sixth 
series. They're six one and one, six wins, one draw. That was uh, the tie with the Cubs mm -hmm. that we saw at home a couple weeks ago. Now at this point, and yep. then the series. That we don't talk about. We won't talk about it anymore unless yeah. we're talking about cheesesteaks. The other, yeah, the the other Pennsylvania city. <laughs> the second city of Pennsylvania. Not Relax. the first city, Pittsburgh. Relax. Or is Too it Harrisburg? Far. Is oh. Harrisburg the first city of Pennsylvania and then it's <laughs> Pittsburgh? How do yins feel about that? Do we know? I think most people in Pennsylvania forget that Harrisburg is the capital. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I know. Aaron Patterson in the chat pointing out that... Um, he thought Sanchez might have yelled see ya in the first inning after striking out Crone. Yes, he definitely did. He definitely did. That, that was what I thought. And then Crone did like a stare and he was like, was that for me? That was confusing, yeah. Uh, yes, that, that that was where all that was. Yeah, that's that was the intel that I heard. The C, and I'm like, I don't, is he saying CJ? Uh, is he, I, I, I don't know. No, he, he definitely said. Yeah, he was fired up from the jump though. Weird, yeah. weird start. I, I noticed every time he would go into the dugout where they had a big inning, got a big out, and when he was done, not too many players on the Nats bench were like dapping him up. Mm. It was just kind of like, all right, your day's done. And so, mm. you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, too, too much trash talking here of there Mr. Was a, Sanchez. Yeah, right? Oh, my gosh. This is like bullying right now. <laughs> no, I was like concerned, though, <laughs> with, with all the body language. And I was like, okay, is there going to be drama? I'm like, is there going to be a bench clearing brawl right, at right. a game where there are 11,000 children? Right. <laughs> yes, so you I, said I, that. I was like, we got to keep an eye on this. That would have been like, I will be watching uh, the body awesome. language. Awesome. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Just uh, one teacher covering an entire row of kids' don't eyes. Look, just, don't <laughs> look, don't <laughs> look. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that would have been fantastic. Would have been just as exciting as an American Raptors rugby game, I, I think. Uh, oh, we've been talking segue. about it. Wow. We've been talking about it for a while. You know, That's a lot smooth. of crossover Segway athletes. Yeah. You know, Brendan, hey, he's a crossover personality. That's he can right. do basketball. He can do baseball. Will he do rugby with Colton Strickler? I have, actually. I've on been the on the DMVR Rugby oh, Podcast. I've been on that podcast. Yeah. The answer is yes. Now, if you head over to AmericanRaptors.com, you might be able to get free tickets and possibly even see Brendan vote in action. Will, will he be on the pitch? I don't know if it's a pitch. No, That's why I, I got to listen to. I won't. So I got to listen to the rugby one on ones. I'm tiny, Patrick. I'm a, I'm a tiny, small man. I'm not trying to play rugby anytime soon. <laughs> but tiny men can be tiny kings. Garrett Hampson. Tiny kings. We see yes. You. Tiny rugby players asking for trouble. Ah, I don't know, man. Don't don't sell yourself. Well, you, yeah, not with I, that not attitude, there. you know. Don't we're sell not, myself. We're say not it, going Patrick. there. But say we, the word short. Say no, it. No, we want you to go. I'm not going to go there, but we want you to go to Infinity Park down there in Glendale. It's fantastic. You can also get some great betting tips on this year's Super Rugby as well. All that and more at AmericanRaptors.com. And we've got some really good free content here, as always, on our YouTube channel. Go over to DNVR Sports if you happen to be consuming this as a podcast. Because, you know what? Hey, maybe you want to branch out and check out some of our friends from our, our sister cities there at CHGO. See what they're doing, how funky the, the Cubs and White Sox are. But we're speaking about funky, and we're speaking about baseball content, we're speaking about sister cities, we got the homie, Captain Caveman, Whoa. Derek Montillo, in the house, joining us live from Shoot. Phoenix, Arizona. What's up, dude? Did you, Did you say Montillo? Montillo? Did you end that with an O? He did. What happened there? We what? have been friends for a long time. Oh, there's and now there's drama. Oh no, no! I'm I'm the I'm the, right, I'm I the have, best pronunciator. For airing beef, I'm on air beef. Come on, you guys <laughs> talking about how much purple meant to you. I just need to put this hat on and say <laughs> how much purple means to us, uh, even though we don't get to watch our team in purple. But it still means a lot to us. Damn it! <laughs> it does. I got I got Alan Trejo on the brain. And if it makes you feel any better, I called him once Alan Treha because I was thinking of my, my good buddy, Derek Montilla. I'm sorry. There you go. All right. That works. That All makes right. me feel better, actually. All right. I, we do want to get to the scouting report and the breakdown and, and the two Zacks. We got back-to-back -back Zacks that the Rockies are going to be facing. The Zach, Zach attack. Zach. Zach to Zach. Zach to Zach. Zach to Zach. Zach to Zach. Zach, to Zach. Band, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see if we get a, a second deck shot. All that good stuff. All those wonderful puns. But look, look. Let's talk about one of the biggest stories in all of baseball. Dan Bellino, umpire, has his dating status changed? Do we know? It's complicated. Uh, yeah. What's the update? It's complicated. 
He's, uh, he, he's, he's in a relationship, is what it is, but he hasn't listed the mystery partner yet. Uh, and, that, and that person is Madison Bumgarner. Unfortunately, he's taken, and he has no interest in Dan Bellino, as demonstrated uh, during yesterday's game. I have no idea what happened. It was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen, right? I mean, there's times where you're like, I feel like the umpire is out to get my team, but I don't know how you couldn't think that after watching that clip, right? Right. Like, it was just such a weird thing that that instigated and and kind of steamrolled because of all the people to do it to there's two guys on the team you don't do it to caleb smith who's a maniac and and madison bumgarner who's an actual cowboy like an actual cowboy you don't you don't feel the hand the rough coarse hand of an actual cowboy what are you doing <laughs> dusty he called him dusty saunders he says look i i know you i know your handle i know your avatar you're right. you're Right. You're sneaking on the down low, and I like it. He wanted that eye contact is what he wanted, and it was beyond weird. It, it really was. was. So like, strange. I, yeah. I, I think the broadcast said it that he, you know, kind of was jawing at the umpires and such, mm. but this is the first base umpire. This isn't the home plate umpire, and it's, like, weird for you to take exception towards him yelling at the first base umpire, especially considering it's Bumgarner and that's what he does, right? He, he, he is kind of the, you know, he's, he's going to bark a lot. He's going to get upset about the strike zone. It's, and honestly, where he's at right now in his career, you know, hitting the corners and such is, is the primary way he's been successful this season. So, you know, he was, he was frustrated there in a bit. He gave up a home run. He's not going to be happy. But I don't think it's the umpire. I, I mean, as an umpire, you have to be able to take – you know, guys like him kind of John at you a bit and kind of let it run, run off your back considering that's your job. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think you can, not that you should, but you can get away with a little bit. He just took it too far. Just straight up checking his hand without checking his hand. He was looking him in the eye to be like, just so you know, I can keep you here as long as I, like. you know, I pulled right. you over here, son. Yeah, it, it yeah. was too far. That, it was hey, too far. That's, that's, a, that's the exact comparison I've made it to is where like a police, you know, a, a police officer pulling over someone all of a sudden turns into this big thing. But while you were watching it, it was like, why as an officer did you keep doing these things, right? right? Like right. as a police officer, as an umpire, as a person of authority, why would you kind of instigate this situation when that's not your job? Your job is to check his hand to make sure he doesn't have any sticky substances on it, right? Obviously, you weren't even doing that well because you weren't even looking at the, at the hand. <laughs> you weren't even looking at the hand. That's he the was drunk on power. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I mean, it's it was wild. And I mean, I, I think that honestly, it might have been one of those moments where you could have seen this team fractured uh, and, and, and not recover from that. And instead, they kind of bonded together. And as a team collectively, we're able to pull out the win and the sweep against the Marlins. It's been impressive to see because it's something that we didn't see from this team at all last season, not one time. It felt like there were they, they had a good April. And then after that, there, there were no moments that you could find where they battled through for a good win. It was just one, you know, heartbreaking loss after another, whether it was a, a loss out of the gate or a, a loss where they had a lead at one point and just let the other team kind of come back and, and roll them up. Yeah, back-to-back series wins, right? Because uh, didn't they do it against the Dodgers over the weekend? They did. They had a series in between there against the St. Louis Cardinals that they split, that they should have won. It was a four-game series, and they kind of let one get away from them. But still, like, it was, uh, you know, Cardinals were playing fairly well. Dodgers, obviously, are the Dodgers. And the Marlins were, at, at a time before they lost that final game to the Mariners, were the hottest team in baseball. So it's been very impressive. It's been very, I guess, assuring to see this team have these big wins now after the, the slow start that they had. Everything that they're kind of doing philosophically seems to be coming together. They, yeah. they haven't been with this coaching staff very long, so it, it, I think it's one of those things where, you know, you know, you got to give them some time considering uh, the lockout and everything like that. That it takes right. a while for for this stuff to resonate with the team. So they're thirteen and thirteen now with the sweep of the Marlins, tied with them uh, with with a five hundred record. And it's kind of interesting, like you said, they they rallied around each other uh, on Wednesday. For that that ejection of, of Mad Bum, they get the day off, which you know comes in handy. Six relievers, and you say, ah man, that that's gonna hurt you down the line. That's the other thing too. You forget is the impact of losing your starting pitcher right. in the first inning, and right. you kind of say, well, all right, you know they're gonna feel the impact of that uh, with the relief core, obviously. But much like with the other ump show we've had most recently with Kyle Schwarber and the Kyle Schwarber dance, you know, doing that thing, you know. 
Phillies rallied around them, played really well immediately thereafter, and 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 swept the the Rockies. Well, we hope that's not the case for Arizona, and they <laughs> rally around. Why do the Rockies keep getting these teams right after these like yeah. ridiculous events? I, 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 it's it's very strange. It's it's a very strange coincidence, <laughs> but it's like some of the stuff that's happening in baseball is just insane. I mean, this officiating crew called a fair ball foul, even though it was obviously fair in the second game of the series. And the umpire just had to eat crow and admit he pointed the wrong direction. He meant oh. for it to be fair. Oh. It was obviously fair, but he pointed it in the wrong direction. Yes. The ball, it was just instinctively. And I, I don't know. I mean, that, that officiating crew had a lot of mistakes in this series. But none, like you said, were as big as losing your starting pitcher after one inning and having a uh, bullpen game essentially come up out of nowhere that you didn't expect. Like, their bullpen is already – Pretty thin as it stands. They called up a couple of young guys. Uh, one guy, Luis Frias, is throwing uh, heat, fire, uh, 99, 100 miles an hour. Diamondbacks don't have anybody like that right now in their farm system or on their roster that can do that. So uh, he's got a bit of a control issue because of that. But uh, again, a, a youngster that has some promise and uh, can potentially be coached up by someone like Brent Strom, who has been doing a ridiculously great job with this staff and the bullpen it's it, it's kind of been miracle work what we've seen i think everybody even people that are fans of this team are kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop when it comes to some of these eras and such with the starting pitching because it seems unbelievable mad bum has the best era that he's had in his career after four starts you know and and merrill kelly zach Gallen, they're both they've both been outstanding diamondbacks have three of the top five pitchers uh, or the other day before Mad Bum's, you know, ejection, uh, they had three of the top five pitchers in all of baseball for ERA. Yeah, That's yeah, not I, we yeah, I think I think the D-backs are like uh, a low key version of the Rockies from last season, where you say actually look at their starting rotation, it's really solid. The bats are are you know questionable. Could tell Marte hasn't gotten hot yet. Right. Keep it that way, please. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> Nick Ahmed's been. He's hitting home runs now all of a sudden in between shouting uh, in the middle of pitches, <laughs> doing that thing. And so Rockies have to face three of those guys. The pitching matchup is Chad Cool on Friday night. He's 3-0 and with a 1.90 ERA. That being Chad Cool with three wins, the same amount as the Cincinnati Reds. Let's keep that in <laughs> mind. How you like them, Apples? That's a, that's a good stat. I like that stat. It's a great Red. stat. Uh, yeah, he, he's doing Babe Ahmed. Ruth type things, right? He's, he's hitting as many home <laughs> runs as teams. Chad Cool's winning as many games as the Cincinnati Reds right now. Entire he goes against Merrill Kelly. Three. Yeah, he, Kelly's 2-1 and one with a 1.27 ERA Saturday. Kyle Freeland against Zach Davies with an H. He's 1-1 one one with a 4.24 ERA. Guy who pitches to contact but is really solid. And Herman Marquez on Sunday. He's got to figure it out against a guy who has figured it out. He's figuring out the health piece. Zach Gallen. Three letters in the Zach. No H, no K. In the course of, I believe, 10 games, the Rockies will have faced three different Zachs, all different spellings. Zach Wheeler, Zach Davies, Zach Allen. How many times have you heard me say that? You've said that more than once to me. I don't At least think the you've second time on the, on the show. show. Have no? you mentioned it on the Maybe. show? Maybe. I don't have that many Zachs on this team, and I had to keep them straight because they all <laughs> spelled their names differently. So as a writer, let me tell you, I hated that even more than facing off against them. But, yeah. Uh, Zach Gallon's been just outstanding. Zach Davies is a guy that had one of his worst seasons of his career last year with the Cubs. And what's interesting about him is I am just skeptical. I I have a conspiracy theory that uh, Brent Strom, again, crediting Strom for his you know years and years of experience, might have had some input on some of these guys that the D-backs kind of low-key picked up because there's a couple of guys that have just been tremendous for this organization since coming over and putting up the best numbers of their careers underneath Strom as, as their pitching coach. So, like, again, it's, it, it's kind of that stuff, like you said, a guy that pitches to contact. We got that in another guy that was a reliever turn starter, uh, starter in Humberto Castellanos, who, yeah, he doesn't put up flashy numbers. He's not going to get a lot of strikeouts, but – he's effective and he puts up zeros on the scoreboard uh and like for somebody that's just recently uh in the last year converted to a starter he's it's been pretty valuable at times so i think what the diamondbacks are basing everything their entire game plan on this this season on is that they went they went strong on the coaching staff and they they added 
like an all-star coaching staff around Torrey Lavallo. It allowed him to throw his hat and get thrown out of the game the other night and still have Jeff Bannister as the bench coach step in, who won, you know, the AL Manager of the Year in 2015, right? Like, so they're, they're, they're deep at coaching staff. And I, I feel like they their belief is that this coaching staff can make players that are good into pretty good, maybe even great players in a couple, instead of going out and spending a lot of money right now on free agents that could potentially block their farm system guys from coming up. Yeah. Rockies have a lot of depth in their uh, special assistance that allows, you know, the manager to stay in the game. Warren Schaefer in AAA, Todd Helen gets ejected from a game. You may have heard that story. That That's fantastic. In a minor league game, you love to see yeah. that. You love all the Zacks on the Diamondbacks roster. Last year, there was two Umbertos on the D-backs yeah. roster. Why not? Why not? I was here for that. The Diamond Zacks. Um, but we got to know what's... <laughs> I haven't been keeping Zacks. tabs on, on all, the, all the fun... I don't know why we didn't use that one. Holy crap. What was it? Yeah. I missed it. The Diamond Zacks. It was right there. The I don't know. Zacks. Love what, it. What are we doing? Awesome. What are we doing this is why we need you. I got to so come through. Down somewhere. Yeah, I'll text it to you. You'll I feel like if you abbreviate it to DZAX, it could be taken. D-Zax. Yeah, that could be. This is a family show. <laughs> well, well I, Matt, the shorthand now when I when I text Derek and Jesse, I've been calling them BAX. Just B-A-X. Yeah, just the back. Yeah. Rockies, <laughs> R-O-X. Diamondbacks, backs, back. yeah. rocks, like backs. Rocks we're back. gonna this make weekend. it a thing on Twitter. Is what That's we're right. trying to tell you. Yeah. No vowels, yeah, no it. syllables. No syllables. Yeah. We we don't yeah. like those syllables. All right, so much. but we got it. We got to know. We we've got an Elvis shake at Coors Field. Brenda, have you got have you gone out to a game yet at Coors? Yes. I've been to three this year. Any any new food cuisines? Anything you're liking, or just old traditionals? Because I know Derek's probably got some. I'm craziness. pretty I'm pretty classic. And a beer and a hot dog, fine with me. So I haven't done beer ton of dog. exploring mm-hmm. with the food options this year. But I've Very been. Disappointing. I've been. If yeah. you had a fo- if you had a foot, I'm trying to step you on your let toes. me down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's room for everyone. <laughs> if you had a foot long option, would you go foot long or would you go just regular? A foot long hot dog? That's yeah. too much hot dog. Um, one hot dog's enough. I always felt like two hot dogs is just crossing a line. One hot dog is a is a nice snack. Two hot dogs is disgusting. All right, what if you know in a couple it's, days in advance it's dollar? Hot dog. <laughs> What'd you say? I said it depends on the size of the hot dog. That's yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the, the D back sells some pretty small like value hot dogs, and I you, I, you can get away with maybe small three value three. hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do mean? What if it's dollar night? Dollar dog night? You're not gonna it's special occasion. You gotta celebrate the holiday. Are you going to no? Three this three? is all. This is a steadfast rule for me. I can't go. I have, it's a one hot dog limit. Man, respect it. I respect. I know myself. It. I'm 28 years too. into this. Yeah. All right, Derek. So they got the they got the value menu, which love that. Yeah, gotta love good stuff. that. But what are some of the crazy options that they brought out, even from the past, or even I don't know if they had anything new. I think they did because you guys previewed that down at Chase Field. Yeah, they they actually brought back all the big food, and that's something that's <laughs> been fun because honestly, the Diamondbacks, uh, like there was a lot of uh, uh, food. Uh, like from vendors that were closed and they didn't replace them. So I kind of compared Chase Field at times to like a dying mall where would you go? You would go in like to go to Hot Topic, but you had to pass by like six <laughs> closed down stores to get to it. You're like, this just feels weird and I shouldn't be here, right? Oh my gosh. So, uh, but the Diamondbacks did bring back all the fun food. They brought back some new vendors and all of that's been great. I will say that uh, the Diamondbacks have something you guys would enjoy very much, which is a uh, Colorado Rockies themed hot dog this weekend because every series they do a versus dog mm. and the versus dog essentially is uh, in, in honor of the opposing team. That's so they cool. try to bring in tastes and, and flavors from whatever region and they literally have a hot dog planned for every home series for every opposing That's game. such a good so, idea. It is. It, yeah. I, I like that. And I can't believe Coors Field. What? Susie, Susie fans hate it. Because they feel like Chase Field, you guys get a lot of like support yeah. from local Rockies fans. We do. Chase Field tends to be a very heavily, uh, uh, you know, opposing fan ballpark when the Dodgers are in town. Or yeah, the Cubs are in town it's the worst like feeling. That, right? I cover the Nuggets, yeah. man. I'm I'm used to it. Yeah, there's right. nothing yeah. like okay. so Celtics fans so, in your arena. Yeah, Ugh. right. And so people get really mad about that. And like, trust me, in some cases, like if I was a fan, I wouldn't even go to the Dodgers series because it's so heavy favorite it, there's so many wow. Dodgers fans, right but this is a team that obviously parents and grandparents and people have rooted for for generations where the diamondbacks just haven't been around that long and mm-hmm. that's something i think you guys get too right but uh the versus dog i think is smart because not only is it something for those fans like to feel like 
this place is kind of catering just a little bit, but it's everybody can eat it like and they're all delicious. So I don't know what people are are complaining about it. Uh, I, I think it's great for like season ticket holders that want something different every series. They at least know there's going to be one brand new thing that they couldn't get last series, this series. And that at least for me is worth it to have a rotating menu like that that brings in new food. That's cool. That's such a good boring. idea. What's That's... the Rockies doll? What, yeah, what, what, what's what on? Are we green, I, I mean, let's take that. Green, chi green chilies, it. maybe? Pro green chilies probably on there yeah, somewhere. Green something like that. Although, how does that pair with a dog? Ed McCaffrey barbecue sauce? No. That's <laughs> uh, deep probably. cut. I don't. <laughs> maybe. Um, I, need, does, I, I, I need to look this up and find it because I cannot locate it right now. But I will get it for you guys. On I think it has it's Peter imperative. Forsberg Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Do we? Can we confirm? No, we don't. We don't know. I don't have that yet. No. You no gotta problem. find out for us. <laughs> but um, I will, for sure. What a great I'll be idea! There on Friday, so we'll, yeah. we'll be out there covering the game. And Chase Field is. You're right. It, it very much feels like a mall. But you know what I mean. You can you can get some Orange Julius. Stop over at Camelot right? Music. Pick up the latest oh, CD from Bill Biv DeVoe. Bill Biv DeVoe, and no. it's cool. Um, I'm happy to hear that a lot of the foods are back and a lot of the concession stands are reopening because yeah. I was there at the end of September and it, it does it did have that dying mall feel to it. And yeah. I mean, that's kind of the case at a lot of the stadiums where like a lot of concession stands changed. But I like hearing that stands are coming back. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Versus. They just brought, they brought back interesting stuff. And I think the bigger thing is even the like. You know, they, they brought back the big, like, 18-inch hot dogs that are mm -hmm. covered in bacon and all sorts of toppings. And, like, honestly, even when the vendors went away, there was a part of me that was like, wait, why did why did that stuff have to go away? Like, I get it. You know, I, I think that they were just being very conservative. The Diamondbacks were. I think they are financially with this team because they're so un unsure about fans coming out and, you know, what attendance is going to be like for this team. Honestly, it, it, I, I, it's a fair weather city, and it's going to be one of those cases where if this team can continue to be this this good, fans will come out. They don't even have to be better than this, but if they can maintain a 500 record where you're not going to go out and watch your favorite team lose every single game you go out to watch, then it, it's it's much more enjoyable to go out to the ballpark. You know, it is. It's going to be enjoyable to watch this series. Rockies, D-backs, Rocks backs, Rocks backs, starting on. Starting on Friday night, uh, it's going to be a great series. We'll have a post-game show, of course, with the wrap. Brendan, um, Susie and I need to confer. Yes, yes. You think yes? Yes. Okay. All right. We've decided uh, we would love to have you back again, yes, Brendan. Yes, we would. Yeah. Let's Derek, do it. Let's um, do it. I'm sorry, but one of us needs to exit the room. No, no. Please follow <laughs> our good buddy. Not just not just awesome Diamondbacks takes, but pro wrestling takes, Susie. Stop it. Right. Susie's right. like, why does everybody like wrestling except me? Susie, Everyone does like I'm, wrestling. I'm a pro. I'm a commissioner of a pro wrestling federation. You're what? I, yes. I'm in charge of these maniacs. Tell why? Me. You missed why? out. We have a whole, I have stories to tell you. you I don't need story. I'm not a wrestling <laughs> oh, yeah. person. Oh, you yeah. don't have to tell me stories. Oh, yeah. Patrick loves my stories, so we're going to have to I'm chat stressed right now. They're good stories. You can get up for all this. that, and, and when you're going to the rally carts, you know, taking Michaela out with it with a T bone there, making sure she can't continue the race. All those fun things at Cap underscore Caveman with a K. And yeah, your partner in crime at Jesse and Friedman. They do an amazing job Great covering job, the DX and just have a fun time too. I love that. That's right. Uh, follow us on Twitter at DNVR underscore Rockies. I'm at Patrick D. Lyons. I am at the Susie Hunter. I'm Brendan Vote. You don't know who I am. At most of you. Brendan. I'm at Vogt. Brendan Vote. You might, you should. Now you do. You, now will. you will. I'll be around this summer. Maybe now you not. will. Whether this you is, like it or not. Whether you like it or not. That's Rockies right. are 15 and 10. Got a nice two game win streak. Sixth series that they've won out of eight. They've only lost one. They're going to try to keep the momentum, as will we. But you know what they say? Momentum is only as good as your next podcast. So we'll talk to you on Sunday. <laughs>